Hey everybody, it's time to roll the wind. Tonight we're going to get serious about our grip, about our landing zone, and how our dice are landing on the felt. We want those dice to land flat. So I've adjusted my table to a hard surface table on one end so that I can hear that clack. The clack is the smack that you need to get the dice to settle in correctly. You need to have energy taken from the dice so that they don't tumble everywhere. So let's get serious. Let's practice like we play so we can play like we practice. And then we're going to go roll the wind. Hey everybody, it's time to roll the wind. Tonight I'm just going to do a little shooting practice, talk about how we want the dice to land a little bit. <clears throat> a couple of things too that are important when you're practicing. Obviously there's never any guarantees when you're trying to shoot dice, right? But you want to simulate everything you can as best you can when you're practicing to casino conditions, particularly the things that you can control. Wardrobe, I mean, do you practice? There's a perfect example. A little live stream I did the other night, I was shooting in flip flops. You know, I wasn't even going to do a live stream. I was just going to come down here and practice, and I decided all of a sudden I'd do one. But when your height is different, when your height's different, you end up at a different angle with your arm in relation to your dice, how well you're leaning over the table. Those things are just as important as your grip. Now I was also practicing with a little different grip the other night as well. I'm not making excuses. Well, I kind of am. But the reality of it is, I wasn't practicing like I play. And that's my mantra. You got to practice like you play. Now, I have two different shoes that I wear at a casino. One is a tennis shoe, it's got a little higher heel to it, higher sole. I always wear that when I'm shooting at the Beau Rivage, if at all possible. Why? Because their rails are about two inches higher than everybody else's. That extra lift helps me get over the table and down my line of sight. I've got another pair that doesn't have quite the, the elevation to it. They got a total, they got, they're really comfortable. They're better for walking around, but they will work when I'm playing on the lower tables. So I'm gonna start out just practicing with this three, two, three, six here. And you're gonna hear these dice, I hope you're gonna hear these dice crack down here on the far end. When they're cracking loudly, they're landing flat. And that's the sound I want to hear. I purposely took the neoprene out from underneath this so I can put it back on top if I want to. But I wanted to hear, I wanted to, ve to develop my toss so that I knew and I know that my dice are landing flat on the table. And with all that bounce, on either end. It's really hard to know if they're landing like they're supposed to every time. Notice the difference? Pretty good little crack down there. That's a three, two, five. I know I've got y'all set up where you can't really see everything, but I want you to see the landing zone down there as well as a little different view of me tossing the dice. Now I'm at a very solid 
six, uh, stick left two. I'm right at nine feet from the wall. See, those did not land flat. I got a three, six, nine out of it. But this one ran to the corner. It's not what I'm looking for. I want, you know, they don't have to stop right dead flat up against the rail, but it'd be nice if they if they would react the same. You want you want the same reaction on both dice. There's an ace deuce. This computer out of my way as much as I can here. Gotta find some extensions for some of these cords. Well, my computer says I can expect a decent amount of crap numbers with this set. So far, that's the case. I'm not as worried about that right now as I am on how the dice are reacting. That sounded really good. Got aces out of it. Sounded good. They reacted in a similar fashion. Too strong on one of them, but I got a two, four, six. See what happens when they didn't react the same. Got a five two out of it. That's all right. That's what we're looking, trying to find out. Need a four for the small. that I got my double pitches set on top and bottom this time. Let's look at a two, one, two, three. Let's go with a two V set. Six. I'm going to mark that with a green chip. I like to mark my hard ways different. Gives me a little visual process. I'm a visualization kind of a guy. Four, 
four, six, ten. Do die sets matter? Of course they matter. Though I've got my double pitches is the same place as I did on that 2V. The other sevens are in different locations. That one a little bit left. Got a 426 out of it. That'll be the point. But they landed really good. Red die kicked out just a little bit more than the blue die. But they landed well. Got just a little stronger reaction off the wall on that red die. So just practicing with two different colored die matter. It is if you track it. If you're trying to track your dice, it absolutely makes a difference. Oh, too hard. We'll have to count it because they would. That'd be a nine for the point. A little too close to the wall. Three six. But you're hearing those dice crack down there. I want to hear. I want to hear a solid. I don't want to hear crack, crack. I just want to hear crack. Six two eight. five blue die came out a little further that time than the red die a little extra energy not quite in sync close Five, three, eight, them right there stop right down there. Right there. That's a good reaction. A little scary close to the wall, but that was uh that was good. Dice landed flat. The table took the energy out of the dice, they just went straight to the wall and stopped. One four, not bad. They did cross over a little bit. A little bit of pressure, too much pressure on the thumb, will cause them to cross over. So if you'll notice on this back side of these die, I'm putting my thumb right there on that edge pushing them into that middle finger a little bit and then on, when I raise my arm I drop my thumb two six eight
so little things matter. I can tell that I'm higher and up over, I threw that way short, two, three, five. But I can tell that I'm in my better shooting shoes than I was a couple of nights ago. It doesn't mean that I would have changed it. I think it would have. So what I'm saying is, if you got a rig of any type and you're going to practice, practice in the shoes you're going to play with. If you know, like I do, certain tables are about two or two and a half inches taller than the rest of them, be prepared for it. Three one four. Didn't quite land flat, but close. The blue die got away a little bit. Sure again. Same reaction though, got a 6-4 out of it. So you really, if you're going to shoot from the deck, you want to have this thing, and then when as you come up, you want to drop that thumb when you get to your launch angle. Just drop the thumb. And they'll just roll right off the tips of your fingers when you drop that thumb. It's not this, it's this. I hope you saw, I hope you could see that. I didn't look at the camera. See how I'm gripping that die? I'm pushing, I'm, I got very little thumb on it, but I've got enough pressure to hold it against that middle finger. Two, three, five. Well, there's a little bit of a grip change for me, and I decided to do it early yesterday evening because I was still having my dice split down there, and I'm trying to develop a toss that is repeatable, same mechanics, with with results that you can kind of, you know, you can't count on results, but you, I think you know what I'm trying to say. You're trying to get a result that you can see visually. There's a 12. I guess those, I guess you would say those right there and they had equal reactions. Sounded like pretty much one good little pop crack. At least I think so. When you're hearing crack crack, you know the dice aren't landing at the same time. Look at that. Lovely. Man, that's that's excellent. Five, three, eight. short, hit the rail up there, got a 10 out of it. Well, I'm out of white chips. So much for marking hard ways. I've only thrown one anyway. Oh, 
Big hop back by both of them, same reaction. Got a 6 1. There's the 7. Alright, so how many tosses did we get out of that? We had a 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 tosses. One junk out of all 16. So 15 box hits plus the 7. That's a money making little hand. Very much so. Very much so. A money making little hand right there. Now, I'm going to do one more. See how it turns out. Probably, I mean, that's, that's a little on the good side right there. Well, let's go with a 6 2 6 3. All right, so I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you in on a big secret. It's not really a big secret. A lot of people don't realize it. If you've got a, if you've got an eight SRR with that two V, you're gonna have an eight SRR with a cross six every time. You can put it in the computer all day. All right, my little. There we go. Get the camera back. But if you've got an eight, eight and a half, seven, seven and a half, whatever your SRR is with a 2V, you've got the exact same SRR, seven to roll ratio with a cross six. You don't have to trust me on that. Feel free to track your own tosses. Put them in bone tracker. And you'll see. 6263 coming out. Hard four. You hear them? hop a little bit down there on that hard table. At least I hope you can. Whoa, too hard to the wall. I won't count it because they would. It's a 3-2-5. That was a lousy, lousy toss. I hit the bottom of the rubber down there. One of my weaknesses. One of my weaknesses. Six two eight. One very pretty. Similar reaction, but that one took a big old giant hop. Then it rolled towards the other one. Oh, lifted my hand up. They run. Hard six. Like if you're shooting a shotgun or something and you peep, you peek your head up, trying to peek down to the firing line or something. Don't do that. I just did it. We'll dance together for quite a while under eight. closer and it even help you a little bit maybe it doesn't 
distract me. We'll see. Six five yo. Two, three, five. Not the greatest effort. They didn't react the same, did they? That one got hung up. All right, cross six. Two, eight. Right now I'm working on muscle memory, same grip, same stance, feet square with my shoulders, body square with the rail. I'm taking my left hand, grabbing a hold of the rail, stabilize my body. I'm not leaning on my arms. I'm not standing on one leg. Six, three, nine. I will say this, if you got, a lot of people have to, they get up on their toes. Don't get on your toes until after you got your dice set and in place on the table, then come up over them. You will wear your legs out by being on your toes, too, tiptoes too long. So my recommendation is not to get elevated on your toes until right before you make your shot. Okay, those did not fly together. One was kind of stuck to my finger a little bit. Five, three, eight. look good they sounded good got a six five yo out of it that's two yo's okay so for example let's say you've got your pretty good shot with that 2v but you're needing some more numbers it might be to your advantage to switch to the cross six same as rr as the 2v I have a better opportunity. It just depends on how that particular hand is going as you toss it. Oh, not a good one. Hard four, though. If I'm not mistaken, we opened with a hard four.
two. Looks like that was probably a similar hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's a come out. I guess I could continue, couldn't I? Let's see how many we got between that seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're about three, three tosses short than we were on the two V. Let's come out seven. Let's shoot a few more, see what happens. All that did was make you reset that all tall small just to give you a little more inspiration. That's a lousy toss right there. Lousy. Sometimes I get too busy talking. And don't think it through. I know it's also boring not to have a little bit of commentary with this stuff. Six, four, ten. A little bit of a shorty. Four. That's the point. No, that's not bad. Did have that come out seven though. Let's see if we can set another point. bit left another come out seven I landed no dice way over here instead of right here I need to be coming right down this line and I totally missed that target that's one of them thank God it was a come out if you're on a live table it's gonna happen we're all gonna do it I can't blame that one on anything but my bad aim. Four, two, six. So six is our point. Other than the all tall small, it's a pretty good money making little hand right here. another four. Man, I love fours. That's one of those decisions you'd have to make because you hit it. It was the point twice and made as a point twice. So that's four, that's five hits. But that's the only one that's been hit when it wasn't, when it wasn't the point. So what would you have bet here? Would you have gone back table minimum on it? Or since you'd hit it, would you have upped it? Well, considering what we've thrown, that's one of our best repeating numbers and it's a great paying number. I'd have probably went more than table minimum on it. There's a five, there's two, and a five, two is a seven out. 
That too did a little dance down there and whipped around. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen with two come out sevens, twenty with the last toss. You just threw your all toss small money away, but you made money on the eights and the fours. If you can't make money on five fours, four eights come on people we know we can do that only one nine only one ten two sixes one of them was setting in the point oh no not bad so remember set your body square to the table if you're right-handed use your off hand on the rail grab the rail you see me doing it all the time that's that's to help stabilize your body it's like a tripod you got your two feet planted straight down here and then you got your arm right over here just like a good tripod similar anyway do that and then get a grip that works good for you with your die set, whether it's claw grip, pinch grip, hardly anybody does a Uri grip. I know a few guys who do it. Or whether it's like I did. I'm pinching it in just enough with my thumb. Good reaction, good landing zone. Four one five. I'll take it. I'll take all the fives I can toss. All right. I hope that's helpful. I hope hope you uh, found something of interest in that. Thank you for watching and hit that subscribe button if you hadn't. Good Lord, we need some subscriptions to keep this channel going up the YouTube chain. I did some blind searches and we're, st we're still kind of hard to find. So subscriptions and watch hours and all that stuff will help. If you would do it, I certainly would appreciate it. Practice like you play. Play like you practice. And go roll to win. I can't, there it is. Go roll to win, folks. Go roll to win. Thank you for watching.